Are you someone who wants to build your own chicken coop or chicken tractor but can't decide on which to build? Why not build something that'll do both? Let me show you what I built and have been using for the past year and a half. At the outset of this project, I really didn't know how it was going to take shape. I had a concept in my head of kind of what I wanted this to be. I wanted it to be a chicken coop, but I also wanted it to be mobile. And in addition to that, I also wanted it to have the ability to have floor space that was open so that it would also act as a chicken tractor. Given the fact that I didn't have a clear concept in my mind and I was going to be assembling this from what I could cobble together off my property, it took me a while for this to kind of mature. And this sat here for about a month because I had to sit there and scratch my chin for many hours trying to figure out how I was gonna do this with the materials that I had here. The entire cost of this project was about $350. One of the inspirations that I had for the design of this, this particular coop was from a, a YouTube channel called Nature's Always Right. The guy's name is Stephen Cornett, and he's got a really good video on a chicken coop that he had built. And I really liked the design elements of that, and I wanted to be able to incorporate some of those design elements in this. What I really sought to emulate from his design was just the fact that it had a very compact footprint. The footprint of this coop is five feet by five feet, given the hens 25 square feet of area. And then above that, you've got the nesting area where I've got four boxes for the hens to go in and lay. And then above that is their roost. The nesting boxes are just milk crates that have had the fronts cut out of them. And they're not fixed in there in any way. They can be removed if need be to clean them. Or the material can just be scooped out into this bedding area and kind of freshened up that way. One of the things that's really nice about having this vertical space is that typically you'll have one bird that winds up getting picked on and in our case, we have one bird who winds up getting picked on by the rest of them, and she's able to very skillfully move between these levels to avoid the other birds when they pressure her. The framework for the structure of this started from a dog kennel that we weren't utilizing. We had six panels, and I started with the use of four of them. It's held together with saddle clamps, top and bottom on all four sides. Different levels are held up with nothing more than two by four. The two by four is just stubbed out of this opening, which is two by four inches. These different levels will float back and forth as this unit is transported. Their roost area and their nesting box area below is kind of in a deep mulch type of an arrangement where I continually add carbonaceous material to cover up their manure. Now, once this needs to be cleaned out, it's very easy. I just need to remove a screw here and a screw here, and then I can bring my wheelbarrow in and then just scoop all of that material directly into it clean these areas out on a frequency of about once per month and I've created a video uh, kind of detailing what that process is and I'll put a link in the description. The roof itself is held on by just uh, some U-bolts with 4x4 and 2x4 construction. Where I've tried to really shore things up is to make sure that this is as predator proof as possible. So any areas that I've got which could potentially get something to squeeze in, I've tried to eliminate them doing that either with hardware cloth, BBC, or chicken wire. The area near the roof in between the rafters I've left open and covered with hardware cloth to allow for maximum ventilation. And in the upper portion near their roosting area, I utilized some of the excess roofing material that I had left over to wrap around the entirety of the upper level of the coop. Cover the back side of it with a five by seven foot tarp, just held on by bungee cords and I'll face this rear end side to the oncoming storm. And then that provides ample protection for not only the nesting area, but where the hens are at up top, it provides a little bit of additional protection from the weather. I wound up also utilizing the design from Stephen's coop in these feed tubes. I don't actually feed the hens free of choice in these tubes, but what they do have access to free of choice is oyster shell and grit. Throughout the daylight hours, they're out either foraging in a pasture or in the compost yard doing chicken things hunting and searching for their food. And then in the evening, I will feed them in this feeder that is suspended right below their nesting and roosting area. So I just keep a block on top of the unit itself. And then I can take this, throw it down on the ground, just lift that up, set that down. And then I've got these axles that are merely just carriage bolts and wheels that I purchased from Harbor Freight.
go ahead and jack the trailer jack up to a point where the hens will be able to move with the unit but not get out and then essentially we're good to go there and come back on this side take out my block and then we're mobile One of the things that adding this additional panel down below does is it prevents predators from trying to work their way in from the outside, making this a very, very secure coop. It's highly predator resistant. However, I would never say anything is really predator proof, but I feel very confident at night that when I lock these hens in here, they're going to be safe throughout the evening and I'm not going to wake up in the morning with a surprise that I didn't anticipate. As with many things DIY, a lot of times you make something and then you realize, you know, maybe I should have done it a little differently. Maybe it can be improved upon. I had the idea a few months back to build a roll away egg system, which worked actually pretty well. The problem with it was that it was kind of unsanitary. And so I wound up converting this back to its original design. Yeah, I wouldn't call it a failure, but it just didn't work out how I wanted it to. So I guess in a sense you could call it a failure. There's mice crap up underneath here. I saw a mouse in here when I was taking it apart. And uh, yeah, I just can't have nesting rodents underneath where I'm collecting eggs. Overall, I've been really happy with the design and the function of this coop. And I hope that it's given you some ideas and might inspire some uh, design considerations of your own. If you have any questions or comments, leave them for me down below. Look forward to seeing you in another video.